Let's talk VR basics. Hey class, Mr. G here. Welcome back to Wonderful Exciting Class. Today is a, I'm, gonna st I'm starting a series. The series is solely devoted around my VR equipment and how can we use that in the classroom. Now, as we're moving forward in the learning space and we're coming out of virtual assignments, virtual learning, we're still going forward in a new mentality. So as we're coming out of that, we have to think about education as a sense of, it's a expanding universe. Where is this thing going? And the traditional, educational landscape is is not the same anymore and it's never going to be the same we have to keep that in our heads it's going to be different moving forward i'm all for moving forward a better way and one of the ways that i found is using vr uh so this this series that i'm working on is solely so that you guys can how to incorporate vr into the classroom and also some of the basic aspects of, of having vr i've had my headset for over a year i've been using it for exercise for play for learning doing all sorts of different aspects and what can we use this thing for and i've always been a big proponent of using of steam in the classroom and using that to help further engage my students and create a better learning landscape because steam and doing something collaboratively with other classes other ideas is always beneficial to the students because they're learning how to add different thought process together to create a better product or create a better learning experience so vr is is definitively one of those best ways to go into that all right so what are we talking about today so today's basics i want to go over with is just the basics of the vr setup my school has is getting several headsets and i'm having to create different ways to use it all right so let's go ahead and rip one of the worst things off on the vr vr aspect is this um you basically have two options which is you can go with the oculus quest which is what i have the quest 2 or you can go with uh one of the other ones here's the big difference the quest 2 is a hundred percent this is it this is all you need is the headset with all the other headsets that you have that have wired connections be it uh playstation vr pc vr there's the htc vive headset the uh St steam valve index all these ones that require a wired connection is basically this is just a display that sits on your face that's it it's not running the programs themselves that is something you got to remember because as you get into vr if you have a headset that you have to tether to a computer that means you also have to buy a computer to go with the headset uh, which most people don't have most people don't have these massive expensive gaming rigs which is what you would need you need you need a high-end gaming rig to run all this stuff which means a souped up cpu which is your computer processor your gpu which is a graphics processor which is those expensive graphics cards which to run those and that's a lot of expense that you're already having to put in some of that stuff can be you know you could buy you could build a gaming rig for as little as a thousand bucks that's a thousand bucks uh, the Quest headset itself, the, for the cheap version, you, you got for this, you got two varieties. You have the light version, you have the pro, the more expensive model. Uh, I bought the expensive one, uh, which the cheap one starts out at $299, $300. The more expensive one's $100 more, it's $400. The difference between the two is the amount of space that's inside of it. So uh, the lower one now is 128 gigs of space. I got the 256 gigs of space in mind because I'm recording a lot of stuff for this as well as my students i'm recording how i'm doing certain things so that we can watch them on screen and, and talk them talk through them learning using this as a learning tool is it's a necessary evil i'll put it that way because so, there's there's a lot of teachers out there who are like i don't want my kids glued to another screen yes and no at the same time because while they're yes it's a screen that's in front of your eyes you are having more of a interact experience you're you're going to be engaged in a different way there's there's rooms that you can set up there's there's different apps that you can use where we're all inside of the headset at the same time uh so i have uh one of the experiments that were been that i did last week with one of my uh with one of my gym teachers is there's uh there's several games that you can do co-op players with so we we have uh, walkabout mini golf gorilla tag and bowling uh i think it's forever bowl uh those are three games that you guys can i can be in my room he can be in his room on the other side of the campus and we can play at the same time hear each other talk to one another so it's almost like a phone call sound but we can sit there and interact with each other in the vr space which that's one of those things that we were missing when we were all uh teaching virtually 100 percent is you didn't have that 100 percent engagement with whoever was in the classroom 
so using that to move forward is a necessary thing. I think that's that's one of those things we need to think about. Instead of having a Chromebook where it's a flat screen and the kids are typing, having something that they have to manipulate with their hands and they're seeing with their face, they, but you feel like you're in that space. And I think that's an important thing for us to keep in mind. So today's class is really over some basics of the headset. Uh, one of those things that I'm using this as a training tool, as a teaching tool, as well as uh, opening it out to everybody. So what are the basic things that you need to know about the headset? So today's topic is that uh, we have my headset set here which you have the main body of the headset and then i have aftermarket head strap aftermarket head strap so this one has a dial knob on the back and i like this one because it fits on the head a lot easier and it's got this nice rounded section on the back so it cradles the back of my head so i can look around a lot easier uh the weight is a little more evenly distributed on the front of my head versus the back uh the ones the base one that it comes with here's the basic one where it comes with a head strap which is really just a like a velcro bungee strap that goes around your head this is very comfortable i like this a lot this is i, I think this one's great more when for working out that's what i really like this for but for me if i'm in there for a minute i'm going to be wanting this one just because it sits on the back of my head a lot easier now, one p thing that people say is it feels heavy on the front of your face, and I will say yes, it can get heavy on your on the front just for because you know this does have some weight to it. Um, one thing that you're going to definitely want to do is on the arms here they have they swivel down a little bit so you can see how it changes the angle of it. So when it's sitting on my face, I have it sitting on there about like this, so it's pitched a little forward, so it hits right on the bone, uh, right underneath the eye socket, and it kind of rests right there with the edge of the of the gasket right there. I like that, I think that works better because then it's a little more supportive where it's supporting on bone structure from the front of the head and the back of the head. So it doesn't feel like it's uh, pressing into the face more and that there's a, more of a pulling action. That I think works a little better. One of the big things that is the definite no-no, do not do this with a VR headset is the, the glass inside of here. So I'm gonna take off my little. So inside the headset, you guys can see the, the glass themselves. These are Fresnel lenses which means that they have kind of a ring element to them uh, when you look at them just off of, of the screen you can see the interior ring so that it basically it's a um, the way that the glass is shaped you can see more depth and dimension in it uh, they make two versions there's a Fresnel lenses and there's pancake lenses pancake lenses are a little more flat glass there's not um, there's not those ridges in them I don't really notice a difference uh, I know that if you look online there's differences and reasons why they're different I, I just don't I don't, I don't it's fine with me. You cannot pick those. Oculus only puts in the Fresnel lenses, but just giving you a heads up, if there's a optical thing that you're doing, that might be something to consider. But yeah, so the glass themselves is a do not touch that ever. That is one of those big no-no things. It's that kind of thing with the lenses. You don't want your lenses scratched. Now, uh, there's a couple of videos online where they're, they're taking these things to task and showing how much damage you can apply to this before it breaks. Those That's a really good video to see because you can see how far, how kind of indestructible these things are, which is a really nice thing to know because um, the most expensive one that they make right now for most consumers is the Valve Index, and that's a thousand bucks just for the headset. The controllers for the Valve Index are a different price set. They, they don't come in the set with it. So you gotta think about that when you're purchasing these kinds of things. Again, this is an all-in-one set. That's why I'm a big fan of it. The face, face cover here, uh, most of the time now, uh, because Oculus, when they were meta, as it is now, um, they have this rubberized gasket that you used to have to buy. I think it comes with one of them now. The new ones that we just got in, they do have uh, gaskets for them. But there's a foam pad here and then the silicone cover that goes on top. I like to have the silicone cover because then you can just take a Clorox wipe and wipe it clean. So then when you're passing around to different students, you know that it's clean in between, um, especially if they're putting it on their face. So my big thing about that is uh, that the, it is being cleaned in between each section. Now, the last thing about the headset before we move over to the controllers is this. Inside the headset, you cannot, um, They some of them have like a roller bar down here that you can adjust the IPD, which is where the glass sits in there this one has three different settings and basically it's kind of a narrow eye minimum mid eye and then a wide eye and what the ipd is is the inner pupillary distance so where the black dot on either eye and how far that space is apart so depending on how wide 
your faces um, that can come into play. Also, they make a kit for uh, a, like a fitness kit that comes with a narrow, medium, and wide face coverings the for the face mask too. So that way you can change out if you have a smaller face. Also, if you have a younger audience, um, I've got a couple kids who they have to have the smaller one because their face, when they put it on, it doesn't turn on because their face is too small for the headset thing. These things happen, just know ahead of time of. Next, moving on to controllers. You have two buttons and then a slim button down here and the joystick. You have the two controllers on the front. And the big thing to remember is when you're, you're inside, of the, inside of the headset, the front index controllers are basically the main control that you're using. You click on clicking things with the front controller, the front one, I usually call this the gun trigger just because it's easier for kids to understand like what we're talking about. And then you have a side controller as well. That one really doesn't come into play. Most of the time you're just clicking on the index controller and not on the sides. Uh, scrolling through maps, you can use the toggle knob or you can kind of grab it with the front controller and then drag up and down on the menu setting and you can get through those pieces that way as well. But knowing the button layouts is kind of an important thing because I don't know how many times I've had to explain to students as we're inside the headset of use this button, use this button, and they don't see the head, the buttons first. So that's one of those things. Uh, it's good to know how this thing's laid out. All right, final thing for today's video is the Facebook connection. Um, that This is like the one hardest thing about the Quest is it is tied to Facebook. There is no way around it right now. They don't have a pro model. There is talk about bringing a pro model to market and then you won't have to hook into Facebook to get your quest working as it stands right now you do have to do that and like i said we have multiple headsets and i'm having to build multiple facebook accounts and have other teachers build facebook accounts that we can keep track of at a local level so that we only have access to those here um when you're doing this you have you have to set up a pin you have to set up a an account with oculus through that facebook account if you're if you're doing this do have that in mind my oculus is tied to my facebook account the school oculuses are tied to a school facebook account that we've used to um kind of work through the process i've i've got mine tied to uh two other teachers that we we work together so they can put the app on their phone and download download the software because we do need that form of contact uh, makes it easier to where they will use their connection to buy or manage the apps that we're using now all of these apps uh that you that you're having on the headset is what you use to access all the different programs and they're all downloaded to the headset themselves but you do have some that you have to pay for and this is a, a money thing that some people are going to have issues with too where you buy the headset there are a ton of free things on the quest store also app lab if you unlock developer mode which is another thing that i'll go into in a different video you can have access to a ton of free stuff and ton of free content that is great to use for the classroom but uh there's certain apps that you got to buy uh for my uh, again with my uh PE coach, me and him were like, we got to get the bowling app. We got to get uh, walkabout mini golf app. Those are two really good apps where we can have cross play, uh, where students can be involved, engaged with one another. We can uh, take measurements on them. Like how many, if they're playing through a hole of golf, how many times did they, they that first time that they played through, what was their final score? Play it through again a month from now and then retest the score. That's your benchmark. Uh, you've got a pre and a post test based upon playing mini golf. Uh, it's great. So, I mean, there's a lot of really good attributes of instead of a kid sitting down at a desk taking a test or getting on that Chromebook and taking an online test that just basically clicking through answers, this is actually applying a methodology, applying a knowledge element to where they have to move in that headset into inside the device to show that they progress better. Um, I would much rather have, have a student being graded on application of knowledge instead of clicking on a dot. I don't think it's a good test measurement. No. And I've been writing curriculum for a long time and I, I really just don't like it. I don't think it's engaging the student enough, but that's my thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up here today. So, uh, but in the next video, we'll be going over some more stuff. So in the next video, we're gonna get into the hub more and start going through some of these apps and going through some of the processes. Uh, one final thing is this before we go for today is the Guardian. I'm not gonna demo the Guardian now. I'm gonna do that at the beginning of the next video. 
what you're doing is you're setting up a play space to where once you go past a certain space, you are no longer inside the headset. You can see the world around you. Uh, that becomes a very uh, crucial part, especially when using students in there so that nobody is hurt, damaged, uh, damaging equipment, damaging themselves, anything like that. Uh, but they do have those kind of features built in. All right, so let's go ahead and wrap up class like this. Homework time. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, share all the various platforms. Get the message out there to as many teachers, friends, students as possible can, trying to educate those masses. Again, if you guys had a question, comment, or concern, raise hands in the comments below. Happy to answer the questions for my classmates. As always, I will see you guys next class. Until then, later, guys.